Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 17, the 4th of July special. That's right. We're recording on July 1st, way ahead of schedule, but we got to get it done. Our 4th of July special, 4th of July being on a Sunday, really throws things off if you're a podcaster. I mean, it kind of leaves you no time. We're not going to be sitting at home. We're going to be watching fireworks. We're going to be having a blast on the 4th of July, which happened yesterday and now today. On this beautiful July 5th, Monday morning, whenever you're listening, you got a nice 30, 35 minute. I don't know how long we'll go. We're going to keep it short and sweet for you guys here today. Episode 17 of Jordan and Drew, the sports crew. My name is Jordan Lorenz, and I'm joined alongside the one and only Drew Skyberg. Drew, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great, Jordan. The Bucks. keep in mind, like Jordan said, July 1st we recorded. The Bucks just came off of an, an impressive Game five win, and they're up three ga- three games to two. And I'm doing great, Jordan. Brewers won two. Brewers are hot right now. We're going to talk all about Brewers and Bucks this week. That's our headlines. Those two things, like we said, we're going to talk about it. But hopefully by now, the Bucks have won the series, and we don't need a game seven tonight. But otherwise, let's get into the plugs. You know the same old things over and over. However, this week. I can officially say we are on Facebook and we're gaining some traction. Jordan and Drew, the sports crew on our Facebook page. And let's waste no time and go right into the shout out of the week. This week, Devin Argo, we want to give a special shout out to this man. He's helping us out, getting our feet wet, right? That's the expression. Yeah. Yes. In the Facebook world. I mean, I'm really kind of down with Facebook. I barely use it. I'll scroll through it once a day or something, but Devin, Helping us out a lot, Drew, isn't he? Yeah, he really is, Jordan. He's making some great posts on there. He's trying to spread the word of Jordan and Drew, the sports crew, the perfect podcast for you. And we really appreciate that. We do. We do. We thank you a lot, Devin. We got a little prize coming for you soon because we ordered our second bit of merch. We're not going to expose what it is yet. Just a cheap little thing that we decided looks beautiful and we want. So we got those coming. And we're working on our third piece of merchandise as well. Three things in under 20 episodes. Those of you who ordered t-shirts, they're coming soon. Hopefully, if not this week, next week they will be in. And then Saturday, Drew and I will have the drive of our life as we go all around Manitowoc, Valders, Two Rivers, Brilliant. I don't care. We're going everywhere to drop these things off. Yes, we are, Jordan. We got to get these shirts to our fans. And we mentioned this in last week's episode, 35 shirts. That's impressive, Jordan, and we can't thank our fans enough for all the support we've gotten. Remember my original goal with this podcast was 10 listens a week, and you thought that was a lot. Yeah, we we had some low standards, and I guess that might be a good thing because we really exceed those standards. But It's always always good to exceed your standards. Got to set your goals low, and then it makes you feel a lot better in the long run when you do well, so... Thank you all for your support once again. We're on Instagram, Jordan Drew underscore sports crew. Thank you to everyone who voted on our MLB pool of Summer Sports Spectacular episode six, which we haven't recorded yet, but we'll be sure to get it done tonight. Actually, we're going to record it and it'll be up for Wednesday. So other than that, our YouTube, you can subscribe to that as well. Leave those five star reviews on Apple Podcasts. Thank you to the one person who subscribed on YouTube this week for moving our way back up there. It is now time. For the stats of the week, another fan-submitted stat of the week. We'll close things out, but first, a hockey stat to get things going. There are only three players in NHL history who scored 30-plus points in consecutive postseasons. And Drew, just to describe you, a point is a goal and assist, or not and assist, or assist. I mean, they both count for points. So if you see someone has four points in a game, which is a lot. They could have like three assists and a goal, two goals, two assists, something like that. Just want to clarify for everyone out there, those three players are Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, and Nikita Kucherov. Kucherov gets it done this year. He has been doing absolutely spectacular as Tampa's currently leading in the Stanley Cup. We will see what happens with that. We'll know more now by Monday as the Stanley Cup. And we'll know more Brewers as well. But as of Wednesday morning, The Brewers had a five-game lead in the NL Central for the first time since July 15th, 2017. And I'm going to read one more, Drew, before I come to you. Because as of Thursday night, the Brewers had their first nine-game winning streak since 2014. If they got the job done on Friday, 
10 game winning streak would be the first time since 2003. Drew, this team is hot. Yes, this team is, Jordan. And I don't want to mention that 2014 year anymore. Um, that was a disaster collapse. But yeah, wave that goodbye. Um, but this Brewers team, this is this is a run that we haven't seen from them in a long time, as that record shows. 2003, since last time they won 10, it's crazy. And, and we are going to talk all about those Cubs games coming up, and I cannot wait especially to talk about that Wednesday game. Unreal what the Brewers did in that, but it is now time for our fans submitted. Stat of the week. Drew, take it away. Submitted by Clay Taylor, the Bucks believer. Thank you, Clay, for the stat. Wednesday night was the first day in MLB's modern era since 1900 on which two teams, which would end up being the Cubs and the Yankees, they scored seven runs in the first inning and still lost. There had only been 25 total losses by teams that scored seven runs in the first inning in the modern era entering Wednesday. And that is, that's crazy. And it happened to be the Angels gave the Yankees that loss and our Milwaukee Brewers gave the Cubs that loss. So that's awesome to see. And Clay, yep, thank you again. Awesome yeah, stat. It's good to see Clay still alive after that Giannis injury. I know he was really down, but I mean, he's still good. He's good. He's moving. He's up and going. Hopefully Giannis is up and going as well. But I just want to say that stat is ridiculous. Ashby came in for the Brewers. We'll talk about him. Pretty pretty poor first, first performance. And then uh, Otani, man, he just really couldn't even get out of the first inning. But Cubs and Yankees, yikes. All I have to say about that. So let's go to on this day. The date is July 5th, 2021, obviously. And... I got to say, when I was looking for on this day at first, you know, 4th of July special, I was in the spirit. I had 4th of July as the state, and I was writing them down. And halfway through, I'm like, uh-oh, I got to redo this. So these stats are even better, in my opinion. We've got some tennis stats to round things off, which I know Drew's going to be a big fan of. But first, on this day in 1935, Tony and Al Cuccinella become the first brothers to both hit a MLB homer in the same game. Dodgers winning 14 to 4. How awesome would that be to have a brother on the same or on different teams, but you both hit a home run in the same game? I think that'd be great. Um, I know Ken Griffey Sr., Ken Griffey Jr. did the same game, but they were on the same team. So that makes this stat even more unique considering they're rivaling brothers. That'd be cool. And we, yeah, really good stuff. I am an only child, so I certainly can't relate at all to that. We have a father-son stat coming up as well. But next, on this day in 1953, the Phillies pitcher Robin Roberts hurls his 28th consecutive complete game in a 2 nothing win over Pittsburgh. So, I mean, this stat doesn't really hold up because we know back in the day they kind of always threw complete games. But still, that is absolutely tremendous from Robin Roberts, 28 complete games on this day in 1989. Here it is. Barry Bonds, homers in Pittsburgh, 6-4 to four loss versus the Giants, joining his father, Barry Bonds, as MLB father-son home run record holders at 408. Barry Bonds and his father, 408. Big, big stat there on this day in 1998. The Yankees beat the Orioles one to nothing to improve to 61-20. and 20 which is one of the, it's tied actually for the best 81 game start in MLB history. Can you imagine if the Brewers were 61 and 20? Well, I think if they would have a, at least an average to above average offense, I think they would have, certainly have a shot with the, with the pitching they have this year. But yeah, that Yankees team was something else in 98. Unreal. And we will be watching a Yankees game from 01. Summer Sports Spectacular. I'll wrap it up at the end of this episode, get you all set for that. And now, some fun ones to end on this day. On this day in 2003, Wimbledon Tennis Finals. Serena Williams successfully defends her title, beating Venus in three sets. On this day in 2008, Wimbledon Tennis Finals. Venus Williams successfully defends her title, beating Serena in two sets. So Serena Williams wins back-to-back in 2 and 3 beating Venus in that second one in 3 Then Venus Wins in 07 and 08, beating Serena in that time. I just thought that was fantastic. Fun little stat to round things off. I'm a tennis guy. I like playing tennis. I'm not really the best at it, but I still like playing it. Something else, something fun to do. Get you out of the house, sweat a little bit, and get running. So that is that. It is now time for our weekly sports talk segment. And Drew 
is going to kick it off this week as we're big Marquette fans. And Drew's got some notes as to this big transfer portal that's been hot recently. A lot of stuff going on, especially in the world of Marquette. You're spot on, Jordan. And one big thing that occurred this past week, Daryl Morcel, uh, he was a f- for his fifth year senior season because now, as we know, with COVID, they granted all, all the NCAA athletes another year of eligibility. And Daryl Morcel of Maryland decided, hey, I'm going to transfer from Maryland to Marquette. And this is actually a very, very big transfer. Morcel, he was the face of the, the Terps program. He was last season's Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, and he was just a really solid player for them. He he averaged nine points a game. He averaged a steal a game, four four boards, three assists, and you're you're not getting him for offense. You're really you're getting him for his great defensive work he does. And I'm gonna really enjoy having him as a Golden Eagle next year, Jordan. Oh yeah, I was gonna say, I was gonna say when you're reading some of those stats, people are gonna be like, "Big guy, four boards a game? That's not much." But no, like you said, defense, defense, defense. That's one of his big things. And sure, you'll get him some bunnies here and there, and he'll be standing there to grab a board. But this guy is really gonna bring a lot to a Marquette team who kind of lost a lot of height. I mean, with some of the guys leaving, so I think this is a good pickup for the team. Yeah, it truly is, Jordan. And one thing I really enjoy is. A quote from Daryl Morcel: when I went into the transfer portal, immediately Coach Smart reached out to me. I just know his track record as a coach. He's my type of coach. He values defense and playing hard. He's a win-first mindset coach. That's such a great thing to hear from Daryl Morcel about Coach Shaka. I love it. So excited. But, Jordan, I got some bad news this past, this past week, what we heard. Dawson Garcia. We Ooh. knew he was... Boo is right. We knew he was he was testing his waters out in the NBA draft, but now we learn some more information from his Twitter at Dawson twenty three Lee. Ooh, he, he don't said shout this. that man out. I'm gonna read it. I have appreciated the opportunity to explore my professional basketball career in recent months. As I continue with that process, I will also be entering my name in the NCAA transfer portal in an effort to research all my options moving forward including a potential return to Marquette. So possibly, Jordan, it might have been a good thing I shouted him. He might stay, but what, I, what I've heard, I've seen Illinois as a front runner, possibly, and with Kofi Cockburn uh, announcing he was also entering the transfer portal, it's possible we might see Dawson Garcia go to Illinois. I think that's certainly, pro- they're probably the front runners right now, and he'd be a big loss. We know he was one of the top Big East freshmen, and it'd be a shame to lose him. Yeah, well, it certainly would have not been a good idea for him to go to the NBA. That would have been terrible. Would have not benefited him at all. But transferring, I don't really think it's a good idea either. His freshman year, I mean, he had so much more left, not only to give to this team, but for him to grow and learn as a player. And under Shaka, you would have certainly got a lot of those things. Did I see correctly? Also, North Carolina had a little interest in him, or was that someone else? North Carolina is also interested. They're, they're a lot of the big schools really want this man at He's got a lot of offensive potential, so you can really see why. Yeah, I mean, I, in a way, you can't really blame him for transferring, but as a fan, you can definitely blame him from transferring. And like we said, this is the 4th of July special, so we're not going to get into a lot of things this week. However, I can promise you next week, Drew, we are going to have a fancy little chat about the whole NCAA players marketing money situation. Next week, it's going to happen, and I just want to say, I saw a lot of hate on Twitter for that. Yeah, I'm going to leave my opinion for next week's episode, Jordan, but I think we can have a very, very good discussion about this. And real quick, did you see that Reggie Bush is trying to get his Heisman back? I saw that, and you know what I thought of? I thought of the Summer Sports Spectacular, and I hope our fans did as well. Exactly. I mean, we could use it as leverage almost to tell people to go listen to that. I Anytime... I see anything about Reggie Bush now. It's all I can think about is Summer Sports Spectacular Episode 1. Check it out if you haven't already. But now, what do you want to do, Drew? You want to do Brewers? You want to do Bucks? Let's talk Bucks. We just watched an excellent Bucks game. That we did. And we are recording on Thursday night if you just joined us for some reason. So Game 5 is in the books. The Bucks have officially won without Giannis. The Bucks get a dominant 123-112 victory over the Hawks. This 
thanks to all of their starters, really stepped up. I mean, you are talking big numbers. Brooke Lopez, 33 points, 26 points for Middleton, 25 points for Holiday, 22 points for Bobby Portis. It was the first ever career playoff start for Bobby Portis, and it was career high in points scored for Bobby Portis. Only bench points they had, three from Bryn Forbes, nine from Pat Connaughton, and we should say Jeff Teague played four minutes, which is four minutes too many. But regardless, this Bucks team looked good without Giannis. I was thoroughly impressed. Jordan, that first quarter we watched with the Bucks, that was one of the greatest quarters of basketball I've seen. They were so active defensively. We saw Brooke Lopez get a, a few swats. We saw they were just attacking the paint, though. At one point, it was they had 28 points in the paint compared to the Atlanta's four. It was ridiculous, and that's that's what this Bucks team is best at. When, when they can get to the rim and not settle for threes, when you could have Drew Holiday drive and then dish it out or dish it to Lopez for an easy easy layup, that's when this team is is the best they are. And we saw that tonight, and I was really, really happy with what I saw. Oh, absolutely. I think they basically did everything right. I mean, I was telling you during the game, there's parts where certainly they were kind of slacking a little bit, but it, I mean, you got a different starting core. You're missing your leader in Giannis. So those little slip ups are going to happen. But Chris Middleton is good. Let's talk about the performance in game three, 113, 102 win. This was the Chris Middleton show. He played 42 minutes, 38 points. We're going back to game three now. When in the fourth quarter, he outscored the Hawks. He had 20 points, I believe, and the Hawks had 17 points. If it wasn't for Middleton in Game 3, Drew, this Bucks team would have been down in the series. Yeah, with his fourth quarter, Jordan, you, you summed it up perfectly. The dude couldn't miss, and I'm rocking my Chris Middleton is good shirt right now. Wore it during the whole game tonight. Gonna wear it, gonna wear it to work, too. I just love, love Chris Middleton. He okay. is so good. How can you not? I mean, with the things this man has been doing this postseason, he's really stepping up. So now we got to look ahead two days ago, which is Saturday, which is two days ahead from us at this time of recording. But Saturday is a pivotal game six. The Bucs are up three to two. They have a chance to go Bucks in six. Bucks in six. six. I mean, it's it's I'm really hoping it's going to happen. It all depends on Trey Young. If he comes back, and I mean, a guy like Herter did not do well in game five at all. Hawks really need their surrounding efforts to step up, and they obviously need Trey Young back because if not, I think we're just getting more of the same in what we saw in game five. Yeah, I, I agree. I think guys like you mentioned, Red Velvet, Kevin Herter, that's his nickname. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think John Collins is a guy who we really need to see step up because a lot of people talk, talk about him as one of the most underrated players in the league. And he hasn't really been performing at that level so far this series. I mean, Bo Bogdanovich has really stepped up, even though he has been injured. And like Capella, like he he played tonight, and or it would have been Thursday night. And even though he had that injury from Tuesday night, but yeah, just I think the Hawks supporting cast, if they want to send this game to seven games or possibly make the finals, they really got to step up supporting cast wise. And I don't know. We'll see. Maybe tonight's game seven. Maybe we can can we can see that Bucks and Suns finals. I mean, what are your thoughts on the Suns real quick? Chris Paul, his first ever drop chance here in the finals. And Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton. That's a good trio right there for that team. And they're obviously going to be hungry. Yeah, they will be. And I think if Giannis, if we got him for the finals, if, if they make it, I think I think you got Drew on Chris Paul. I think. I don't know, I just I think this this team they're they're both very similar teams in the sense I'm not gonna say like Devin Booker and like Devin Booker Middleton you know he's got CP3 Drew and then Aiton Lopez but like Giannis really needs like I think this Bucks team I think they have a really great chat really great chance if they have Giannis against the Suns team. But I agree. It's just one of those things where do you keep Giannis out? Game six on Saturday we'll know. I know we'll see. I mean, his injury looked nasty at first when he came down, especially in that slow-mo. But thankfully, everything came back good. They just kept him out. Precautionary measures. Basically, you don't want to blow him on a game that in the long run doesn't mean as much as a winner go home game. So, yeah, we're going to see what happens. It's going to be fun seeing Suns in the finals, that's for sure. And the Bucks, they're looking to get back to the finals for the first time since, what, 74, did it say? Yeah, it was, I, I think it might have been 75, 76, Jordan. Could have been. 
one of the two, somewhere in the ballpark, but it has been a long, long time. It has been a long, long time since the Brewers have been doing this well. A 14-4 to win over the Cubs on Monday, Drew. You went to bed and you missed yourself a 10-run inning. I went to bed the top of the eighth, 4-4. Four to four. Wake up the next morning and I see a 14-4 to four W and I looked at my phone. I had to double take. I'm like, what? How, did, how does that happen? And I had to go scroll through. I had to rewatch the bottom of the eighth because I was so annoyed I missed out. But Jordan, one thing about it, with that three game against the Cubs, when Eric Sogard pitches twice in a span of three <laughs> games, you know you did something right. I mean, I love Eric Sogard, though, former Brewer himself, now on the Cubs. That's going to be a tough transition, by the way. If you're a player like on the Cubs coming to the Brewers or a Brewer going to the Cubs. But yeah, it was not good. Cubs needed position players to pitch. I'm going to recap the bottom of the eighth, all the scoring. So like you said, it was 4-4. JBJ hit a double, which ended up scoring Jace Peterson. We're now at 5-4. Tyrone Taylor, sacrifice fly. So we're at 6-4. Now, Luis Rios, double, 7-4. Willie Adamas, home run, three-run shot. So we're at 10-4. Jace Peterson with an RBI double, 11-4. And then a three-run bomb from Keston Hira to wrap it all up, 14-4. Hira has been on fire. Yes, he has. And it's been it's been great. He's been making solid contact with the ball. We're seeing less and less swings and misses, which is really his issue. Misses, swinging and missing at pitches in the middle of the plate, like down the middle of the plate. And I mean, the, he might not be walking as much still, but we're, we're seeing him make solid contact with the ball. And that's all you can ask. And I'm re- really happy with the progress he's made since he's – been down and now he's up again. So that's great to see. Yeah, I'm totally fine with him getting an out or a base hit on like a 2 1, 2 2 count. I mean, you don't need to watch everything. It's just better to see him being a little more patient, which is good and not striking out as much. I mean, his confidence is certainly back, I would have to assume. And Brewers win 2 1 on Tuesday, only get two hits in the game, but they end up winning 2 to 1. And then Wednesday's game, big one, Aaron Ashby debuts and he's starting for this team and a lot of people I mean after seeing his performance they were like never should have started put him in a bad position rivalry game blah 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 blah. I think this was the perfect situation to start the dude we were five games ahead of the Cubs at the time already won the series Ashby's coming in to give Burns an extra day of rest so he's back to his normal five Ashby pitching in a starting rotation his first big league game At American Family Field, his family's there in attendance. Rivalry game against the Cubs. Gives up seven runs. I believe four of which were earned of the seven runs. I'm not completely positive on that. Yeah, four were earned because he didn't get help. I mean, Willie Adamas, ball went under his glove. Could have been a double play, which would have significantly changed things. And then there was a pass ball by Narvaez. But regardless, Brewers are down 7-0. Ashby only makes it through two-thirds of an inning. And then on Thursday, gets optioned back down to Nashville. I mean, which we knew was going to happen. He wasn't going to be a big leaguer for the full time at this stage. But Brewers get a run in the bottom of the first. They get five in the bottom of the second. And then they have an eight-run bottom of the fourth. Ultimately win 15-7. to seven. What a comeback from this team. Yeah, Jordan, it, was pro- it has to be right now the game of the year for the Brewers. Um, with Aaron Ashby, I... I said before the game, I thought they really rushed him. And granted, his outing wasn't the greatest, but he, like you said, he didn't get any help. He showed some promising stuff. I mean, in that fastball was in the high 90s. He had some really nice stuff. Yeah. Yeah. He had some, it was going well. And in, the, in that sense. And, but just, yeah, the way, the way they were able to come back, Adamus with the huge grand slam. And Jordan, what do you think about the Adamus trade yet? Are you still, are you still questioning that trade or? Well, listen, listen, listen. Trevor, Trevor Richards is the luckiest man in the world to have a 3-0 and record. I don't understand at all. Right place, right time. 3-0 and for Trevor Richards. However, I mean, Willie Adamas has been absolutely lights out, spectacular. Like you said, grand slam in this game. He has just lit a fire under this Brewers team. He's bringing the bat, which is great to see because we talk about time and time again the struggles he had hitting at his home ballpark, but now at a Brewer. He's hitting absolutely fantastic. Luis Urias, two home runs in this game as well. So Urias, I think he had like an eight-game hitting streak or something as well at one point. So, I mean, Urias is coming back. Here is swinging the bat. Adamas is doing well. 
Colton Wong was back for a while, but now he's kind of hurt again. I don't really know what's going on with that. Kane will be back eventually. Yelich is doing fine. Jace Peterson is well for, I mean, what he's doing. This Brewers team is right place, right time. Everyone's getting hot, and they have a big old lead in the Central. Yeah, they do. Six and a half games right now as of the recording Thursday night. And the Cubs, Cubs got a four game going right now. Or is it the Cubs? Where, wait, where are the Cubs right now? They're against the... They are... I can look real quick. Cardinal, uh, Cardinals are Rockies for a four game right now we got. So that's um, a big part of the division. Cubs and Reds. They've got a three game. Cubs and Reds. So yeah, the Cubs were off Thursday and then they had a three game this past week. And hopefully... You know, the Reds took care of some business because we, we wouldn't mind those Cubs Cubbies being even farther back. Oh, that's the goal. I mean, we really need that, and hopefully the Brewers do well in this Pirates series. Anything you wanted to say about the Thursday night game? You want to mention Burns at all? Yeah, I want to talk about Burns' status. Um, many of us were watching the Bucks game, including Jordan and I, but we try to fill in to make sure we can cover some stuff. And one thing was that Burns, Burns left the game early. Well, I mean, it wasn't even early, but like Burns left the game before he had to for an injury. And the issue with him was that a cleat slipped on his next to last pitch and his left knee got jammed up a bit. And it was said that he it has been bothering him a bit, but he pitched through it throughout his outing. And he pitched a very, very great outing with Burns. It's expected. And he said he doesn't think it'll cost him any time and he's not too concerned about it at all. So that's really good news for Brewer fans because... Like you mentioned, we had, he did his spot start with they did spot start Wednesday in order to ensure that he has an extra day of rest and you know and hopefully that, that this time not around now he doesn't maybe need that extra thing of rest extra day of rest with the because they've been Brewers have been doing the six six man rotation the hundred sixty two man season hundred sixty two game season <laughs> there you but, go yeah um, hopefully Burns know. yeah we see him again. Yeah, it's just it's kind of smart in a way too because of how consistent this Brewers team has been playing. Like they're going long stretches without an off day, and that brings us right into this week three game series against the Mets. It says it's on ESPN Tuesday night, July six. I have bandits, so of course I won't be able to watch it the one time they're actually on ESPN. And then they've got a four game series against the Reds. So once again, they're playing the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, nine, ten, and eleven. Seven games this week three against a Reds team who is sitting one game under 500. And then they play the Mets, who are six games over 500 at the time of recording. Who knows if we'll be seeing Jacob deGrom or not. We might get no hit if we do. So what are your predictions? You're going first because you are on fire lately. It is now 7-4 to four in this prediction challenge. So you're really coming back. Yeah, I am, Jordan. I'm kind of clutch. And we got a four game against the Reds, right? That's what it was? Yep, correct. Yep, so seven games this week. I'm going to go... I'm going to go to the classic four and three again, Jordan. I think we're going to see DeGrom next Wednesday. That'll be interesting. But, um, yeah, I think I think you beat beat the Mets, maybe take two out of three. I don't think you win that DeGrom game. But I think, you know, maybe we split the four game with the Reds, and I'll go four and three. All right. Well, I mean, that's kind of bold. I would say, I mean, that's what I was going to do is four and three. But that's the call. That's that's what you do when you let someone else go first. I kind of gave you the last few weeks. I really underestimated this team. But do I want to overestimate them this week and go five and two? That would require, you know, it would only require one win against the Mets and a sweep against the Reds. It's certainly possible. Three and four would probably mean one win against the Mets. And then uh, you tie it with the Reds, which wouldn't. Five and two. We're going to do it. Why yes. not? Let's go. Love bold. it, Jordan. Go big or go home. I I usually don't go a high bold. I usually go low. So this is this is a big week. And who knows? This Brewer team might hit 10 runs against Jacob DeGrom. You never know. But if he yeah. just has an off day and the Brewers expose him, it's yeah, you certainly really, a possibility. You really don't know, Jordan. This Brewers team, 20 and 6 against teams over 500. Just have to reel that off to you. Yes, I have heard that stat. And that is crazy how well this team is doing against great teams. And Drew, this is perfect. We are right at the 30-minute mark, and it is time for some trivia. Now, this week, very special trivia, 4th of July sports trivia. Every question is about a sporting event that happened on the 4th of July, and we're going to start going back in 1911. This is pretty easy. Which player's 40-game hitting streak came to an end? Was it Ty Cobb, 
Onus Wagner or Shoeless Joe Jackson? Ty Cobb. Indeed it was. That is a one of one start. Good go. Good job getting it around. And I went in order. So from the event that happened way far back to the most recent. So next, July 4th, 1939. What famous Yankee became the first player to have his number retired in baseball? Was it Lou Gehrig, Bill Dickey, or Lefty Gomez? 1939? Yep, Lou Gehrig, Bill Dickey, or Lefty Gomez? Lou Gehrig? It was. That is a good, good 2-0 start to go on this 4th of July trivia. Now, fast forward to 1980, and this is a very important date. For Nolan Ryan's career. Why is that? Is it because he threw his seventh no hitter? Is it because he achieved his 12th career one hitter? Or did he join the 3000 strikeout club? He joined the 3000 strikeout club. Indeed, he did. That is a big day in 1980. And you're all three and oh. Next question soccer on this day. I can't say on this day. I'm sorry. July 4th, 1994. Team USA reached the round of 16 only to fall to which eventual World Cup champion? Italy, Brazil, or Spain? Brazil. It was yes. Brazil. I didn't know if maybe you would think Spain. Trip up Pele. on that. Yeah, because they're, they're all good soccer teams, the ones I mentioned. Soccer countries, I guess I should say. They're always up there. Now, for the first time since I don't even know when, can you go five? Of, it, would it be since episode two with Robert Jimmick? <laughs> Oh, yeah. boy. 15 episodes later. It's all on the line. Right here. The final question. July 4th, 2018. Joey Chestnut set the current world record by eating how many hot dogs? Is it 66? Is it 72? Or is it 74? 74. It is! Yes! A five of five. On the 4th of July trivia, unbelievable. What a performance. How fitting. You know, I, I got to celebrate the holidays some way. And this is my first time since episode two, like we mentioned. And I lost that trivia in a tiebreaker. So this just this feels 100 times better than that one. Play Wonderful the question, Jordan. Yes, I tried. A very. It, was, it wasn't as hard as I expected to get the trivia questions but i mean get those fireworks going a day after fourth of july let's get a little extra for drew skyberg today and now you're actually moving back up there you're 23 out of 35 in season two of trivia so that's not the worst i mean that's certainly not bad at all yeah i'll take it jordan and i'm really just i'm speechless i went five for five it's been so long huh. i it was it's got to be such a relief to go five of five and i can tell you that our only other trivia that's left on the wheel is video game, game cover athletes. So that'll be tough when we get there. That'll be the 40th question. I like to have 50. So we'll see. Maybe we'll do like some NBA finals trivia or, oh, MLB all-star game trivia. We'll see when, when is the all-star game? All-star game's coming up. We just learned of the all-star starters Thursday night and it should be in a couple of weeks. I believe it's mm, two weeks. Yeah. Okay. So I can, we can probably we can probably get some all-star trivia in there as well. But five of five trivia, Drew. Shout yourself out. Everyone's going to follow you now this week. Hey, you got to follow me. Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Drew Skyberg. D-R-A-W-S-K-Y-B-E-R-G. It is as simple as that. Jordan Drew underscore sports crew on Instagram. Jordan Drew the sports crew on YouTube and Facebook. Give a, What's the difference between a like and a follow on Facebook? I'm not sure. I, yeah, I've been I, trying to learn that today. I have no idea. No idea. I honestly have no clue. Devin, help us out with that one, bud. What's the difference between a follow and a like? Because we have more follows or followers, which you would think would be good, but I don't even know at this point. So thank you all for listening. Leave those five-star reviews. Leave a nice little comment in there. Say something good about Drew and Trivia this week. Be like, I want to be like Drew and go five for five. Just leave some comments on the five-star reviews. We love reading, we love reading them. And send in your stat of the week for next week. Chances are you'll get on the episode if you do that. So thank you all for listening to episode seven or episode 17, the 4th of July special of Jordan and Drew, the sports crew, the perfect podcast for you.